Hello, this is Michael with Beyond 20, and today we're going to talk about the adaptive dashboard feature in Sharewell 9.4.0 that was just released. Um, this feature is similar to the adaptive forms um, that's available in the admin client, um, but today we're going to go into the management client, and we're going to go to dashboards, and then dashboard manager, and we're going to modify an existing dashboard to show you some of the features of the adaptive dashboards. So we're going to take a dashboard and we're going to right click and we're going to edit it. Now I've chosen a pre-made one here called Incidents. Now I've already made some changes on this dashboard here. Um, this is the original dashboard. As you can see here. And then this is the tablet version, which is a shrunk down version of this dashboard. And we can access them just by clicking up here on the bar. Now, what we are going to do today is we're going to add another dashboard. And the way that we go about doing that is up here in the upper left, we have this adaptive layout. And this allows us to select uh, our layouts depending on the which adaptive dashboard. So if I click on this, it'll take me back to this one. So we can do it one of two ways um, here in the management client. So currently we only have these two, but let's go ahead and add a third dashboard layout. And you can also delete them here if you are unhappy with one of the layouts, but we're not gonna delete anything right now. We're just gonna simply add a new layout. So let's go ahead and add a custom layout and we're going to call this mobile and let's go ahead and set the width and height on this. Now one thing to note when doing the adaptive dashboards is that the new layout can't be within 20 pixels of either the height or the width of the of another layout. So you will get a little red uh, warning mark if that is the case. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a simple uh, square which is 600 by 600. And you'll see here now that this red box indicates the work area that we have to work with. So currently the items that we have on the previous layout will either have to be shrunk or removed in order to fit within this 600 by 600 area. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go ahead and remove some of these items to make sure that we have enough room for everything to show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and select all these links here and let's get them off of the layout because they're not going to be necessary here because we're just trying to show information on this dashboard. So we go through here. And the reason why I'm doing it individually here is because there's this uh, rectangle and it will always give us problems if I try and select everything because it's going to select this rectangle here. So we're going to simply move this up a little bit so we have it more at the top and then we're just going to move this up to match. There we go. And then now then we need to shorten the length of this here. So we're just going to go in here and we're going to modify the position. And since our layout is only 600, we're going to go ahead and change our height to 600. And so now we've got it. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's reduce the size of these so we can fit these other charts in here. And let's go ahead and move this and let's actually make it the same width as this. And the reason for that is we're gonna move this over here. So we want this button to be the same width so that way when we line things up, it'll fit within the parameters there, see? And then now all we have to do is we just have to go in here and then move this up here if you'd like. 
And then this gives us a work area where we can put more items on the layout here. So let's go ahead and we're going to shrink all of these. So what I like to do usually is I like to modify one and then I make all the rest the same size. So I usually go in here to position and I like to keep them square. So you'll notice that the width and height is 120. So let's go ahead and let's change it to 90. This is going to reduce it uh, by a third. Now, when we do that, though, we're going to have to shrink the font uh, to make sure our actual labels fit here. So what we just need to do is we need to go to the text label and we're going to need to change this label font. Let's go ahead and set it down to eight. Now that looks a little bit better, but let's go ahead and reduce the size of this here because this is also going to be an issue. So let's go ahead and drop this down to, let's go 24. And we're looking much better here, but let's see if we can actually go ahead and let's see if we can change that to 9. Because I think 9 is going to work a little bit better for us. Nope. All right, 8 it is. So let's go in here and let's switch it back to 8. All right. So then. Now then, if we want to make the same, we just go in here. We're going to make these eight. Just go in here and we're going to set the font to eight so that they're all consistent across the board. And then now we just go in here, select all of these tiles, which are basically widgets. And we're just going to make them the same size. And now we've shrunken them. Now, the only challenge now is going to be, it looks like some of these actual labels still need to wrap here. So we're not done yet as far as, um, I'm gonna delete that label. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to expand this so they actually wrap and they fit in here. So let's go ahead and I can see right away that the problem is we changed the font, but we didn't actually change the width of these. So what we need to do is we actually need to set the width of these label field. As you can tell, they're still extended. So even though we changed the font, we didn't adjust the, the width of these. So it's going to be a simple case here to do that here. So all we have to do is select each label field. And now we're just going to make them the same width as our widget and that's going to shrink them there and now we suddenly have the text is now wrapping so we set this to 24 so let's go ahead and set these to 24. now this is still easier than doing this manually if you had to build a dashboard um, Having to do this uh, would be a little bit more problematic because you're going to have to build these widgets by hand. But let's go ahead and shrink down these graphs and let's go ahead and see if we can get it to squeeze in here. And let's go ahead and move these over. And I'd like to move these over into a specific corner and then we line up from there because I find it much easier once you have a reference point to line it up off of a reference point. So we'll go ahead and move this one here. And then all we have to do is take these items and line it up with this one. And now let's go ahead and we'll do a little math trick here. So what I like to do is I like to take the top and the height and then when I want to do an offset, so say we want a 10 spacing here. So what we're going to do is to make sure everything's spaced out correctly, I like to add these values and then add the offset. So this is 94 because it's 90 plus 4 and we're going to add 10. And so we're going to set the top of this one at 104. So what you'll see here when we're done here is now we've offset it and now there is a 10 space gap now in order to move this all we have to do is click on this and then align it with the top so it puts it back into position and then now the same thing for doing it here on the left so i'm going to line these up with the top 
And then to offset this one now, I'm going to use the X coordinate or the, the left coordinate here. So it starts at 180 and then it's a width of 90. So that's 270. We're going to add 10. So that's going to be 280 for this one. And this is how I usually do it here when setting up dashboards here. And doing it this way, make sure you get a well-aligned dashboard where everything lines up and looks really nice. Um, yes, you can eyeball it, but sometimes when you eyeball it, you end up with a few pixels out of place. And I find this to be a much cleaner method of doing it. And so let's go ahead and line these up with our top value. And we're getting close to being almost done here. So now we just go in here and then line these up here. And so of the six, we actually have four of them lined up now. So on this one here, let's go ahead and line this one up on the left. And so we're at 280 and 90. So that's 370. So we're going to add another 10. So that's 380 for this one. And feel free if you want to use different numbers. Um, I'm just trying to use something that will actually fit. If we have extra room, you can always resize it and add this. I'd always ha like to have uh, more room to work with and less room to work with, um, simply because it makes it a lot easier. And now we can just line this one up with this one. And now we have all of our widgets lined up with a 10 space between all of them. So now the challenge will be to try and get these uh, graph widgets to fit in this area here. So let's go ahead and let's move this one up here. And we're just going to slowly click one too many times here. So there we go. Now again, if I wanted to do the same spacing, all I'd have to do is go over here. And the top is 104 and 90, so that's 194. So if I want to make sure I kept the same spacing, I would put this one at 204 so I can go ahead and line the left up, change the position to 204. Now I can type that in there. I can click. It's all up to you and how you want to do it. So now I've maintained my spacing. So let's see if we can fit this one in here in the same area here. So let's go ahead Let's just line the tops up and let's go ahead and let's see what do we have. Oh, we have plenty of room. So let's go ahead and let's give this one a little bit of extra room here because these are actual graphs. So I'm just going to scoot this over a little bit closer to the edge here of our layout. And there we go. So now I'm going to make sure I hit OK. And it's going to save our changes. So now if we open up this dashboard, it's now going to open up to the dashboard. Now, because my connection's a little bit slow, <clears throat> when I adjust the size of the screen, it's going to be a little bit difficult to tell when it transitions in the adaptive layout. So I'll try and go as slow as possible so you can see here. And as you can see, my cursor's kind of timed out on me here because I'm gradually doing it and it's taking a while to redraw. So you may see it <laughs> jump really quick here. And you can see it graphically try and change because my cursor positioning changed. So let's go ahead and leave it here and see if we can get it to change. Nope, let's go ahead and scoot it in a little bit more. Okay, there we go. As you can see, this is our tablet layout because this is basically the layout there. And if we scoot it in a little bit more, you will see now our mobile layout that we created. Now, as I push this out so you can actually see it, it may uh, switch because depending on how close to the other layout your layout is, the system may switch back and forth here. So you do have to finesse the window a little bit here to make it uh, to test it out. Um, thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, please go to our website. Thank you.